I'm WVTM 13 Chief Meteorologist Jason Simpson and Hurricane Adalia, an absolute beast tonight. That being Tuesday night going into Wednesday morning. Category 2, wind sustained at 110 miles per hour with the 9 p.m. update. That was a special update because hurricane hunters have now found the pressure all the way down to 960 millibars. So just a little math here. We have dropped from 983 to 960 since midnight and seen the wind ramp up from 70 miles per hour to 110 miles per hour. And that is rapid intensification if there ever was such a thing. Uh, so here's what's going on with the storm as of 9 p.m. And here we are looking at the clock at 9.31 p.m. recording this. There you see the eye and you see the progress. It seems to be jogging just a little bit to the right, but we get these things called oscillations, trochoidal oscillations. Uh, they it cause the storm to move back and forth just a little bit. Uh, the overall pattern here still means this thing could strengthen a bit more before it makes landfall. And you can see right where it's headed, um, National Weather Service in Tallahassee, they outlined this area and said, this never happened before. Not on record. We've never seen a major hurricane make landfall in Appalachie Bay. So there's nothing to really compare it to. There's no historical record. We can model the storm surge, but this will be a big, big problem for what we would term Florida's forgotten coast. Uh, so this is what it looks like on radar, easily trackable with radar uh, off the coastline, even though it's at a long distance. The rain bands are moving into Sarasota and Tampa. They're going to get a lot of rain. I think Tampa is going to get spared the worst of this because, I mean, you got to think, this thing would have to take a hard right-hand turn to go into Tampa, and that's not going to happen. Uh, so it moves toward the north-northeast through the rest of the night, and the track is, well, not changing all that much. Here's the forecast model guidance. At midnight, we think this thing is still off the coast. Now, this is just one forecast model example. And from near Cedar Key, the eye would still be about 100 miles away. But look at that. You've already got near tropical storm force wind. Look at anything above 40s tropical storm force. You've got tropical storm force wind already approaching the coastline by that point. So it's extending out 100 miles from the center. The hurricane force winds, again, based on just the model data alone, extend outward from the eye something like 20 to 25 miles. So you've got about 50 miles of hurricane force winds to contend with as this is approaching the coast. And it may expand out just a little bit as it moves toward the northeast. So look at this. You get those wobbles in the path. This model has been really gung-ho on the area close to the Cross City community. Um, I'll say this much. It could be as far to the southeast as Cedar Key. It could be as far to the northwest as St. Mark. So 43 miles seems like a huge margin of error, but we are dealing with a tropical system making landfall with land to its right-hand side. Sometimes that can cause it to be pulled one way or it can completely break away and go the other. There are some some interesting things that happen with that. I think back to Hurricane Charlie, Hurricane Irma, uh, Hurricane Ian did something similar to that. So we do have to be mindful that it may make a jog toward the right. I do think the National Hurricane Center's forecast looks pretty good at this point, though, taking it right up between Horseshoe Beach and St. Mark's. But unfortunately for places like Cedar Key, we've just got this onshore flow. And then you, you look at these little inlets in the coast here. So what's happening is water is just getting piled up against the coastline. And as long as the flow is from the water toward the land, the water just keeps on piling up. Uh, so here closer to home tonight, we have had some showers and thunderstorms around central Alabama. These are going to start to fade away through the rest of the evening, although some of them are still pretty heavy in a few spots. This is WVTM 13 live Doppler radar. Uh, you see the clock there just after 930. The forecast here in central Alabama for tonight into tomorrow morning. Showers are coming to an end. We're partly cloudy, breezy with a small chance of some scattered showers coming up on Wednesday afternoon. The better chance would be over East Alabama. I think places like Talladega, Anniston, Alexander City, Clanton through Shelby County, Etowah County, Cherokee County, maybe even DeKalb County 
could get a brief downpour or two. So tomorrow, a chance of a storm, a high close to 85. Uh, look at this, though. By Thursday, we're forecasting a low in Birmingham at 65, but we may have a few spots that get as low as the 50s in North Alabama. Wouldn't that be nice? 55 Coleman, 53 Muscle Shoals, 56 Huntsville. That might be a little bit too cool given the very warm ground that we have, but still, it's something to look forward to. We've also got college football coming up Thursday night. UAB playing, Sanford playing. The weather looks great. High school football Friday, we're looking good there. And then uh, into Saturday and Sunday, as well as Monday of next week, Labor Day, isolated storms are possible, but most of us not going to get much rain after this little wave of showers and storms moves out. We'll keep on tracking the storm for you. Watching Idalia pass to the southeast of Alabama is one of the main reasons that we get the drier weather and the cooler weather Thursday and Friday, but then the humidity does start to surge again Saturday and Sunday.